Hello and welcome to today's event about studying in the Nordic States with the help of the Assisted Mobile App, your number one student app for international higher education. My name is Gesa, Gesa Heim, and I hold an MSc in higher education and science management. I'm specialized in the German and European higher education sector since over 15 years. And I'm a senior expert here in the YUF slash assisted team. And I'm based in Berlin in Germany. Quite sunny and nice today. And I'm, of course, very, very happy to talk to you today. <coughs> so concerning the talk, my I have two parts. The first part will be a little advertising why it is a very good idea to study in Europe with a focus on the Nordic states, particularly Sweden and Finland. And the second part will introduce the features of our wonderful assisted mobile app to you, show you how you can use it to find your ideal study destination. So first of all, I should convince you that it's a very good idea to study in Europe, right? Germany, Sweden, Finland, Switzerland, Italy, France, Malta, and also other countries. These European countries offer highly attractive study programs to local and international students and charge non or very reasonable and affordable tuition fees. Countries like Germany, Switzerland, Austria, but also Italy and the Nordic States offer scholarships to students based on their financial background as well as their educational acumen. And there are hundreds of different types of scholarship available with most of the institutions. And we, with our assisted mobile app, can assist you to find the right spot to study. Now you would like to know who we are, of course. We are a professional recruitment and higher education consulting team with years of experience in recruitment for the European and worldwide higher education sector. We have experience not just in recruitment, but also in visa processing, accommodation assistance and scholarships. Committed to providing you assistance from start to end in every aspect of your university admission. The application submission, coordination of the process with the university, visa support, accommodation search, projects during your studies and many other features. By the way, just for your information, I forgot to say that in the beginning, I'll be available for all of your questions right after my presentation, right? You can use the chat then to ask whatever you like about education in Europe, education in the Nordic States, where I'm going to move next now. In the Nordic States, so we mean Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark and Iceland were that, the universities are very special. They encourage you to think critically, independently and creatively. The countries have a penchant for unique and specialized programs are, and are researchers' paradises. Higher education institutions in these countries have adapted to the Bologna process, making study results portable and internationally comparable. Higher education in the Nordic states is divided into the three levels of bachelor's, master's and doctoral level. Pathway and foundation programs leading to bachelor and master programs are also on offer. In most cases, you wouldn't need them because programs are often taught in English and directly accessible. Specialties when studying in the Nordic States are internship during the courses in many, many study fields. And a large part of the learning process takes place outside of the classroom. Students graduate well prepared for the challenges and demands of working life. There is a spouse visa possible under certain conditions if you go to study in these countries and there is no age limit for masters and PhD programs. Sounds great, doesn't it? Okay, so let's move to Sweden first and have a closer look at this very beautiful country. This is Stockholm, the capital. As I said, capital Stockholm, the currency is the Swedish krona, so Sweden is part of the European Union but didn't adapt the euro, they stick to their own currency. And the Swedish government invests a higher proportion of gross domestic product, GDP, in research and development than most other nations. Sweden is the country with the highest number of patents per capita in Europe. So you can see how inventive the Swedes are. 
The Swedes, Sweden is home to the Nobel Nobel Prize. And why should you study in Sweden? The higher education system is very dense, very well financed, and is known to be one of the best in the world. Sweden tops the European Innovation Scoreboard. Language is not a barrier, as programs are usually taught in English. There is a high employment rate, as well as high average wages per hour. We need to say though that also the costs of living in general are not really low in Sweden. There is a diversity and a wide range of programs on offer. Student nations, organizations specifically responsible for organizing student events and integration on campus are present everywhere and on every campus. The Swedish passport, and we'll explain to you how you'll get to a Swedish passport, is the second most powerful in the world. Sweden is uh, one of the world's most inno innovative nations and has been called the most digitally connected economy. So also here in this concern, you find modernity and attractiveness. Cost of education and living. This is the absolute minimum, right? The absolute minimum is 750 to 800 euros a month. That's really if you adhere to a very strict student life. And there are 14 public universities and 17 public university colleges in Sweden. There is also a career center at each university. So whenever you would like to stay and work in Sweden after your graduation, you can get advice and training there. Tuition fees range from 6,500 to 8,000 euros per semester. So if you compare that to North American destinations or Australia, this is quite affordable. And the good news is that there are scholarships, a lot of scholarships to have. Scholarships are, for example, provided by the Swedish Institute, dedicated to international students applying to master's degree programs. Scholarships are also offered through the VISBI program, the partnership between EU Eastern countries and Scandinavia. Russia is suspended for now. Awards are offered to students who apply to programs focusing on subject areas related to sustainability, innovation and corporate social responsibility, a topic that is on uh, high on the agenda in Sweden. Sweden is a society with very low hierarchies, with a lot of um, equalitarian aspects. So corporate social responsibility also plays a role. Scholarships are also offered by the individual universities. Each institution is free to decide the amount, duration and admission criteria for their scholarships. So it makes sense if we later look into the search that you search a combination of a good study program plus a good scholarship option at the university where you're going to. There are also country-specific scholarships offered to international students from certain countries. The funds come from universities, independent foundations and other types of organizations. And there is the Study Portal Scholarship, the so-called International Distinction Award, but that's valid for every country. So now let's dive and look a little bit at the universities. So here you find a nice table showing you uh, the rank within Sweden and um, the place at the World University Ranking. And you can see at least two of them are among the, you could say more or less among the first 100 universities. And I wouldn't put too much emphasis on worldwide rankings because they often compare impact factors that are not so important for a good student life and a good student career, actually. So Karolinska Institute is a technical university with a worldwide reputation, very strong. Lund University as a rather comprehensive university in a small town in southern Sweden. The town is called Lund, which is very beautiful. I like to be there a lot. And then you have Uppsala University, Stockholm University in the capital, the University of Gothenburg, Chalmers University of Technology, the KTH Royal Institute of Technology, Erbro University, and the Swedish University of Agricultural Science. But you can actually be guaranteed that each higher education institution in Sweden has their merits and their quality. The state accreditation system is a very strict one. So you can actually 
be safe to opt for every university that we have on offer in Sweden and it will always be okay. Other important universities we have listed here because you might pop into the names, John Köping, Heimstad, Linneos, Skövde, Linköping and Umeå University. That is very, very far north. So you're going to see northern lights there. An important aspect, we mentioned that already before, if you go to Scandinavia, you might think not only about going there for studying, but also for your career purposes. There is a strong collaboration between the academic institutions and the industry. Skilled professionals in the field of computer science, IT, web development, psychology and preschool education are in high demand. And you have the presence of world-renowned Swedish companies like IKEA, Spotify, Volvo, Ericsson, AstraZeneca, Tetra Pak, H&M, and of course, many others. So I promised you to say a little bit on the permanent residence. Um, after graduating from your studies, you got a post study visa option for 12 months. And you have had uh, a residence permit for work for four years. You must also have worked in Sweden for the, at least 44 months during your permit period to be able to receive a permanent residence period. So after four months, after four years, sorry, out of these four years, you must have worked 44 months and then you can apply to for a permanent residence permit. If you have lived in Sweden and had a residence permit for doctoral studies, for a total of four years, over the past seven years, you may be able to get a permanent residence permit as well. You might know, I don't think anyone is here on the PhD level, but still, PhD students are uh, employees at Swedish universities, so there is no PhD without employment mm, and getting paid. So this is considered as a full job and counts on the conditions of the permanent residence permit. Now, I'll have a little tea and we'll move to Finland. So, this is beautiful Helsinki. Finland is a northern European nation bordering Sweden, Norway and Russia. Helsinki is the capital of Finland. It is the home to the most beautiful northern lights. Education is a strong part of Finnish culture from preschool years into adulthood. You know, we, for example, as Germans, who also have a very reputational education and higher education system, many times look to Finland and the Scandinavian countries if we want to see the best models for preschool, school and high school education. Finland's top-ranked higher education system offers more than 400 English taught bachelor's and master's degree programs in 13 universities and 22 universities of applied sciences. Finnish higher education institutions have over 20,000 international students studying in several locations around Finland. The safety index is very high with a 12th worldwide and again and again and again, every time this report is drafted, Finland is the happiest country in the world, according to the World Happiness Report. Or let's say its inhabitants are the most happy in the world. Um, yeah, maybe a word on that. The Finns are very close to nature. So um, a living experience in Finland will always take you close to nature, close to snow, close to lakes, swimming and so on with a beautiful nature and a very, very rural countryside. This is also something that Finland has to offer. Studying in Finland is a very good idea. Being on a student visa, students are allowed to, uh, to work up to 25 hours per week in Finland. According to Statistics Finland, 55% of university students reported having an employment contract while studying. One year post-study visa will be granted to the student if they wish to stay back in Finland. As per studies conducted, almost 50% of the international students stay back in Finland after their graduation. Work-based residence permit can be applied for once the student obtains a full-time employment. The student will be eligible for permanent residency after working for four consecutive years. 
cost of education and living is also not low in Finland. This is unfortunately the case with all the Scandinavian countries, but it's really good value for money. There are two different aspects to consider. First of all, the tuition fees and related uh, scholarship options. And in addition to that, your everyday living costs. Finnish higher education institutions offer a range of scholarship options for those non-EU EEA students, which is based on different universities. The annual tuition fee depends on the university and the program, varying between 4,000 and 18,000 euros. And in Finland, by the way, they do pay with the euro. There's no own Finnish currency. Everything is in euro. Monthly living expenses for students, including food, accommodation, travel and insurance, are around 700 to 900 euros. And again, this is the minimum, the absolute minimum that you should provide for. Good news is that also here you have scholarships. Finnish government and EU scholarships for international students like the Erasmus Mundus pro, uh, scholarship programs in Finland. Finnish universities participate in a number of study programs which are funded by the European Union, the so-called Erasmus Mundus scholarship. They are very competitive and there's only a few of these programs and they might be interdisciplinary or very specialized. So you would need to check out exactly whether this is something suitable for you or not. And the, other than that, uh, the big universities in Finland offer university scholarships. Aalto University, for example, offers the Aalto University Scholarship. Uh, a number of full scholarships for non-EU EEA international citizens in these programs. And the scholarships will be allocated in order of merit. And the, pretty much the same scheme applies to the University of Helsinki scholarships for international students. Please be aware that in order to apply for scholarships, you sometimes need, or in the most cases, need two applications, one for study admission and one for the scholarship. If you download our assisted mobile app and let us guide you through the process, we will help you with that and indicate you which application is which. You can also find out yourself, but it's easier with us. Okay, let's move to top Finnish universities. The University of Helsinki, all over number one. And Aalto University, which is also in Helsinki, uh, maybe the biggest competitor to the big University of Helsinki. Then you have uh, local universities in some of the smaller towns in Finland. University of Turku, of Tampere, of Eastern Finland, of Oulu, of Jyskile. And the La Penranta University of Technology, that is very, very, very far north in Lapland, and the Abo Academy University. There are also other universities, and all of them are good. Um, sometimes you have to watch out a little bit that you maybe stay in the southern part of Finland. The winter in the north can be really a bit challenging. Having said that, I'm also going to explain a little bit to you the career prospects, Finland is home to uh, one of the world's largest companies, which is Kone OIJ, which is an international engineering and service company across 60 countries worldwide, with the headquarters located in Espoo near Helsinki. And the company has been ranked as 32nd most sustainable company in 2020. And then, of course, there is now back on track Nokia Corporation, a Finnish multinational telecommunications, information technology and consumer electronics uh, company, which is on the market since 1865 and has also its headquarters in Espo near Helsinki. So these are only two companies. The Finnish shop market is very dynamic. There are many startups, many IT startups, many IT solutions found. But also, just like in Sweden, psychologists, engineers, um, educationalists are always uh, wanted. So this is um, what I had to tell you about um, higher education in Sweden and in Finland. And now we're going to explain to you how to use the assistant mobile app in order to access these wonderful offers. And I'll take another eight to 10 minutes to do that and then there's space for your questions. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you try to download the assisted mobile app. 
it was designed like a magical triangle to connect students, higher education experts and universities. Students looking to study overseas for the higher education can use the app for searching and applying to top universities, getting virtual counseling, participate in discussion forums, get information and support for visa processing projects during their studies, yes, even that, and accommodation, even all the arrangements before you arrive on the study spot. Education experts can get access to an active student community and guide them for the higher education needs. They can even conduct online counseling and events to promote their services or participate in forum discussions and more. Then educators can register their universities here and promote their study program to a diversified student community. They can post news and events on upcoming programs or new accreditations received to attract more students to their institute via the assisted mobile app. But you also have to know that not only universities who actively advertise within the assisted mobile app are present there, but basically a lot of universities that are not actively registered are also listed so that you have the choice among a huge, huge, huge variety of universities. The process flow is quite easy. You download the app, which is available for both iOS and Android formats and can be downloaded from the App Store or the Google Play Store. And then you create your profile, an attractive profile, but I always say an honest profile, you know, because otherwise it doesn't help. With all your information that will supplement your search and enable us to find the best matching study program for you. You can search through a wide range of university options using multiple filters to find your best choice. There's a lot to do once you join the community on the app, virtual events, news articles, search good housing options, or book an appointment for counseling online, and share the great news and support your peers, experience the new age of uh, international education that comes with these online tools. Our search engine is something that I like very, very much because, I mean, on the web you find national search engines, right? You find at the study in Sweden, this nice yellow black page, you find all the possibilities in Sweden, but then how to compare them with the options in Finland? How to compare them with the sometimes tuition fee free options in Germany? Mm, so this can hardly be done by general ranking sites and so on. There you can compare the ranking, but you cannot really compare the study programs themselves. So here you search for universities, get details of study programs, intake periods, scholarships, options, and more. And you can filter your search based on the country, study programs, tuition fees, and more features. Also, because many ask me that uh, in these presentations, you can also according and filter according to language requirements. So if you do not have an IELTS test and you don't want to do one, um, you can also filter and find universities that give master's admissions without teaching in English without IELTS requirements. If you're confused between two or more schools, you can simply use the compare feature to evaluate them on different parameters and to choose the best finally. University details will contain everything from the date of inception of the university to the program list, campuses, ranking, and more in a structured and comparable layout, just as I pointed out. Otherwise, it's very, very, very difficult to compare Italian and Maltese options with Finnish options. This is what we wanted to do. We wanted to give you the whole transparency where in Europe is the best place to study. We believe that the Nordic states are a very, very good uh, destination. This is why we talk about that destination today. You can explore and attend events like webinars, virtual fairs, workshops, virtual tours at university conducted by the universities and the assisted panel of experts to share information with the assisted user community. You can get housing and accommodation information and something very important. We, uh, with Assisted, you get to explore the Europe's number one internship portal, Praxis. This, via this portal, you can get projects and internships during your studies and make sure that you got a good spot even before you start a study. Um, 
but this is for people who already have an admission and are about to enroll. Raise a question in our chats and forums, discuss a topic or post an announcement. You can do any of the above in this highly active and informative forum. Or chat with a student, counselor or university from the app to clarify or resolve any doubts in real time. And also, if you prefer actually to be consulted uh, physically, not only online, you can also use the feature agent near me to locate educational agents who are in geographically close location to, the, to you. You can get a list of possible options and then choose after going through their profiles. With the drastic increase, though, in online services, it has become essential to have virtual options for communication in higher education. With the Assistant Expert feature, you get the opportunity to connect with an international education expert with years of experience and knowledge in the higher education sector. We will guide you in each and every aspect of your European university admission process, whether it is to the Nordic states or you opt for other states. Scholarships, we have mentioned scholarships before. So if you download and register and apply through the assisted mobile app and submit your application through us, there's also always the possibility to apply for scholarships if you decided for universities that offer some. But sometimes, as you saw, there are national programs that are talent awarding um, or talent promoting organizations and foundations. So also with the scholarship feature, we can help you. And sometimes because the details are not always very clear, it makes sense to contact um, the backend uh, expert on the panel to ask for scholarship options because we try with our artificial intelligence to enlist all the options, but sometimes we miss out some in the virtual world. So it's always worth asking us. Scholarships in form of full or partial tuition fee waivers are the most common international scholarships offered by universities and are usually in the academic category. Tuition fee scholarships are the next best thing to fully funded scholarships in the sense that a good portion of your study costs is already covered. Hmm? At the Assisted Mobile app, you can browse through the wide range of scholarship options available for different countries and locate the option that best suits your profile. And additionally, you can choose to talk to our assisted experts, as I said, who are fully equipped to guide you along the procedure and support and to support you throughout the process. Was this the next slide? Yes, this was the next slide. Now, accommodation. Accommodation is really important. Um, this is the number one question that we actually get um, once a student gets admission. Well, it's two. It's the visa and it's the accommodation. We're going to go to the visa service immediately. Because with the assisted mobile app, we eliminate the need for you to browse for hours. Instead, we bring unlimited housing options to your finger at your fingertips. You can get details of the apartments with price, dimensions, contact information, pictures. Again, three parts work together. The posts by accommodation providers, universities or students can easily get housing information on the app instantly and get responses easily. Share and upload your housing information with some good images to showcase the apartment layout and get responses in the app from students all over the globe. That's the perspective of the accommodation providers. And talk to experts, you as a student, um, whether it's for a short-term program, an internship, or an extensive two to three years stay, our experts will guide you through every step of the way to locate your perfect housing with ease. And this is very important because there's a lot of fraud on the market. There's a lot of disorientation. Some offers are not serious. If you are somewhere in the world, in Nigeria, Egypt, or Iran, you might not be able to go to the place where you're going to study easily and check out yourself. So we can really help you with that. We um, have close connections to our accommodation providers and check the quality for you in advance. Then another very important thing is the visa support, right? Whether for higher education or internships, the assisted mobile app offers services to uh, support all your visa-related requirements from A to Z. 
you can get all the information from visa procedures to documents, interviews and more and talk to our experts virtually and get step-by-step -step assistance. Visa is always very stressful, you know, so you, do, you can't make any mistakes. You only have one time to apply to the embassy. So we can guide you because we have oh, accompanied, I don't know how many hundred thousand students on that process. Which type of visa do you need? How do you apply? What are the exact documents needed? And not only what are the documents, what is the quality? Do I have to show the original? Does it have to be approved? Does it have to be testified? And so on. Where you apply, um, how you can crack the visa interview, because we accompany so many students that we quite well know what is going to be asked. And for example, what is the insurance needed? It can be very confusing to deduct from a letter of admission of a Swedish university which insurance is enough to cover the visa requirements. So all of these questions, if you don't want to have this hassle yourself and you feel, yeah, this is really something where these guys from Assisted could help me with, I think this is a very good idea and will make your life much calmer and easier when you apply for studying abroad in Europe. Now, that's it already. Thank you very, very much for your attention. My dear colleagues from the tech team have already put um, a lot of links in the chat. I can see for you to download and to get acquainted and familiar with the feature. If for some technical reasons, happens sometimes, um, the app is not available or you can't download it on your current mobile phone, you will find us also on our website. Um, and you can also share the news, um, support your peers to also get this wonderful possibility and maybe go together in a group to Europe to study there. That's also a nice endeavor. So from my part, that's it. I'm looking forward to helping you um, with finding your spot in Europe, with uh, having a successful journey to one of our wonderful universities, particularly in Sweden or Finland. And now um, I leave the floor to you. We have plenty of time, 20 minutes or more, to answer your questions. Um, can be anything. If it's very closely related to something that you study, a GPA requirement and so on, I might have to transfer you to the tech team or to the back end. You can always write an email to us or download the assisted mobile app and get your uh, things clarified directly there. But I have a lot of experience and I'll try my best to answer your questions, even if they are very detailed or very personal. So thank you very much for listening. It's much appreciated. And now the floor is yours for your questions. So I didn't want to make you shy by telling you I might not be able to answer very detailed questions. But you're really welcome to ask anything. If I don't know the answer, we'll just transfer it to the backend experts and then we'll get the answer. Faisen, thank you. You want to know if there's any information regarding studying in Belgium? Um, yes, for sure. So the Belgish university system is divided into two parts. One is in Flanders, um, the Flanders Dutch speaking northern part of Belgium. And the other part is the French speaking part, La Wallonie of Belgium. Um, so in Flandern you find Antwerpen, Brugge, Ghent and so on. And in La Wallonie you find, for example, Liège. While Brussels, the capital, um, has as well has Dutch-speaking universities as well as French-speaking universities. For example, l'Université Libre de Bruxelles, Free University of Brussels, um, 
is the French-speaking universities, why they have exactly the same name, the University of Freie Universität Brussels, um, which is the free university on the Flandern Dutch-speaking side. Um, they have, I think, um, they're the, the highly ranked, the highest ranked Belgish university is the Katholieke Universiteit Leuven in Leuven, near, um, near Brussels. It, ha it is a very big and very comprehensive university um, offering an excellent medical education, a lot of engineering studies and so on. Um, and you have tuition fees in Belgium for national as well as international students. Um, and um, you have, as I said, yeah, I'm just trying to, to read your, your message while I'm talking. Um, you have um, tuition fees and you do not have in Belgium um, the problem of admission to higher education. For example, in Germany and in the Scandinavian, Scandinavian and Nordic countries, um, you sometimes face a problem to get admission. In Belgium, there is free admission for everyone who would like, to, who meets the requirements. So in Belgium, it's not like, okay, you want to study, for example, um, a, a bachelor in political sciences and there are a hundred spots, but everyone who applies has to be taken according to Belgian law, but has to pay, of course. Uh, Thomas More University of Belgium is a university that I haven't heard of. Where is it located, uh, Faisan? Do you know that? Okay. Hmm. Okay. I think you would have to check whether this is really listed on our, um, within the assisted mobile app on the list. Um, yeah, I think it's a um, college that is affiliated to the KU Leuven. KU Leuven, just, you know, I, I wouldn't know this particular college, but KU Leuven is, is the best address in Belgium. So it might be that they, for some reason, to restructure or to professionalize a certain branch of education, founded this college or for some reasons that they can easy, more in a more easy way, admit international students. Um, it will be, depending on from where you are, it will be quite a challenge to live in Flandern and the countryside. Um, Leuven is, is not also not a big place, but there are a lot of international universities. Mechelen, this village that you mentioned, might be very, very <laughs> Belgish, Flandern. Um, you might learn the local language there. I'm sure it's, uh, it's uh, a reasonable option. Okay, well, completely different question, whether the test us is mandatory in Germany. Um, no. Well, yes and no. It depends on what you study and on which level you study. If we are talking about uh, bachelor programs in Germany, they are mostly, I'd say, 90 to 95% taught in German. And there you have uh, to have a DSH, the German examination for higher education entrance. Um, test us is not enough. Um, and uh, you would compete with all the international applicants there. On the master's level, there are a lot of offers uh, by German universities that are taught in English. If they are completely taught in English, they might not have any, or they mostly don't have any German requirement. If they are taught in German, yes, there will be German requirements like test as, test DAF, uh, the Goethe Institute certificate and so on. Um, but there are also programs that are offered in German and in English where you can either handle in an IELTS or a German 
language certificate. So you can study in Germany without knowing any German. But if you study in German, you have this. I don't have the test us levels at heart, but I think you need the second level from above. Might be a five or something. Yeah. But then again, um, I mean, we on in the assisted mobile app we focus on English speak in English offered programs. Um, but our experts can also easily check that for you what the language requirements are in Germany. <laughs> By the way, all the universities set their own individual language requirements. So there is no central language requirement um, unless for the access to bachelor studies um, that are taught in German. Ah, which option would be best to study in Finland or to study in Germany? Um, it depends on what you would like to study and what you would like to do with your life, actually. Um, absolutely. You can find um, very high quality bachelor and master's programs in both countries. The offer and the range of master programs in Germany is, of course, bigger because um, it's a bigger country. It has a lot more universities. Um, in Germany, it depends a lot on the city where you go to. So you can find big cities like Berlin, Munich, Köln, Cologne, Hamburg, and so on, um, where you will have all of these exciting cities, but you, where you will be quite alone as a student. Um, so if you don't come with friends or with people from your national community, you might struggle in the beginning to find your way. While in Germany, there are very cozy, very beautiful student cities like Göttingen, like Heidelberg, but also in the east, um, Cottbus is a great place to study where you really have student communities and people to guide you through the system. Um, in both countries, you will have a very liberal approach to education saying, okay, nobody said, tells you, okay, this is your schedule. You have to be here at eight o'clock on Monday morning doing this and doing that, but it will be rather your choice and your motivation to study. Um, I'm a German, <laughs> so it's difficult for me, of course, to, to rank Finland over Germany, but the advantage in Finland is that... <laughs> I mean, maybe you have the prejudice that it's not like that, but the country is much better organized in terms of higher education than Germany. It's much more digitalized. And as it's a smaller country, it is uh, easier to foster innovation and innovative structures. Uh, Finland, way before we started tackling these issues, has uh, tackled digitalization, um, has tackled sustainability issues, also in research and development. Um, so the place is, yeah, also the, the living experience, it's, it's more equal, let's say. You really come, the, the Finnish society is a society where you don't find many inequalities, which is not so much the case in Germany. You have international communities in, in, in both countries. Maybe in Finland, really in, in, in Helsinki, it's the only city where you find big international communities. So if you rather prefer, you know, to be not, not too much exposed to the locals, um, you can be more invisible in Germany. Uh, in terms of academic quality, it depends really very much on the subject. Engineering is great in both countries. Um, social and sciences are great in both countries. I think compared to the regular student or, uh, study offer in Finland, you find more courses taught in English. But of course, because Germany has so many universities, um, we might have, we might end up with more. Um, you want to study bachelor's in computer sciences? Yeah, I think... Um, mm -hmm. 
I think I'd probably go for an offer in, in Finland just because of the higher digitalization and specialization possibility. But you can also, IT is also fine at many German technical universities. I would suggest um, you use our tool and our compare feature because it's also a question of money. Uh, in Germany, you might find it cheaper to study. Yeah, you, you don't have tuition fees, but you might find the necessity to learn, learn the German language first. So there are pros and cons on both sides. And our backend panel experts, once you get two lists of universities that uh, one list of Finland and one list of Germany that sound appealing to you, that's uh, also very fine. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, any more questions? Okay, I'll be available for more questions for another, let's say, two to three minutes. Ah, okay, another question is coming in about the study system in Denmark. Sorry. <laughs> Messed around with my headset. Um, the study system in Denmark is very um, similar to the one in Sweden. So... Bachelor programs are often taught in the local language, but you find uh, English options. And um, the tuition fees are for internationals at bachelor level. I can't tell you, actually. We would have to uh, look into that because we fo focus so much on master programs that I wouldn't really know. Um, you might have to learn Danish to uh, in order to study from scratch on the master's level on whole Scandinavia there, there's no problem to find English taught programs but the bachelor programs are very very often taught in a local language Danish is a language that is quite easy to learn if you're a German um, if you're not it will take some efforts um, housing and accommodation depending a little bit on the city you have um, nice, nice student cities like Aarhus for example uh, which is a very well-known student city in Copenhagen it tends to be the same prices as, as Sweden with Finland being a bit more expensive um, and Denmark being between Germany and Sweden is of course also an attractive destination um, for international students, so it's also, of course, a safe choice. Okay, and we have the next question. Is the age gap an issue to study in Sweden? Um, no, it's not. There's no age limit, as I pointed out, to uh, for masters and PhDs. For PhDs, it's a bit difficult because you find have to find employment, you have to find a position in the university. Uh, without academic experience, that might be difficult. But there's also no, um, for example, I did my bachelor's ten years ago. That doesn't matter. You can still apply for master's courses in Sweden. Okay. Well then, thank you very much for your questions. That was very interesting. I hope I was uh, could be helpful to answer some of your questions. If there are still open questions and if you are um, interested to find more options, then you're welcome to download the Assisted Mobile app and we'll be there 24-7 just at your fingertips to consult you. Then maybe the last question, what is the Studienkolleg in Germany? The Studienkolleg in Germany prepares you um, if you come from countries where the higher uh, high school education is not valued as, as equivalent, 
like in Germany, so in many countries where you have 12 years of school only, um, you would have to make like a gap year um, at the student college. It's like a pathway program. You can only enter the student college if you have a B2 level of German. Uh, because the, the classes are taught in German is like the last year in German high school in order to qualify you to close the gap for qualifications and to be a real adequate to a German high school graduate. And then you can seek it. If, if you enter a student college, you can, you have to choose between a certain subject fields. So you can do sciences, humanities, uh, medicine, preparation and one more, I think, social sciences. And then you get, uh, if you pass the exams after one year of student colleague, then you can, you are entitled to apply as a direct applicant, not as an international applicant, but as a direct applicant to the fields of study in Germany and study in German. But what's really important to know at the student colleague, you get German lessons, but you don't learn German from scratch. You need to bring a B2 level of German in order to study there. So this is mostly the, the hurdle. There are some student colleagues also in English to prepare students for private universities, but this is very young, very new. If I study in first semester in Belgium and then it's possible for me to study in the second semester in Germany or any other country, can I transfer my credit hours? Um, yes, you can, because credit hours are credit hours and they can be transferred. Um, but it is quite uh, an individual process. So, okay, you were, you said you would like to study IT, right? So um, what would happen is you'd get admission to Thomas More University in, in Belgium and then, for example, decide to transfer to Technical University of Berlin, let's say. So you would, in during your first year, with your grades from the first year, apply to the German University for enrollment in a higher semester. Each enrollment application for a higher semester is assessed individually. So the study program coordinator at your target university, Aalborg in Denmark or um, Berlin in Germany, would assess what you did in Belgium during your first year and they say, okay, yes, this student can be admitted to the, for the second year but has to do two or three additional courses or can be admitted without any conditions, can directly enter. So yes, it is possible and within the Schengen area, this EU common visa area, it is easily possible. If you move, um, for example, from countries that are not part of Schengen, it's difficult. So it's difficult to transfer from Belgium to Switzerland, which is not part of the Schengen area. But within part of this visa sharing area, it is an academic question rather than an organizational question. But it's also not really necessary because within Europe you have the Erasmus Plus uh, scheme. So you can do a student exchange. You can go to your university in Belgium and then for the second or for the third year apply for a student exchange to Germany or to the Netherlands or to Denmark. And go as an exchange student, study for one semester or one year at the destination and then go back to your home university and transfer the credits from your year of study abroad. This is what a lot of German students do and also a lot of Belgian students. Every, actually, every student in Europe does this once in a while. It's a very exciting experience and I recommend this to everyone who's in the position to do so. Yes, yeah, so this is the much easier option to transfer, to really transfer from one university to the other. It's theoretically possible but not very common. Okay, thank you very much for your interesting questions. And I think the tech team has a last video for you. And be in touch with us. Good luck for your journey through Europe, be it Belgium, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Germany, or something in the South. Thank you very much. Goodbye.